Hi, I'm Dan Carter Passy. Welcome to Model Building. In this episode, I'm going to focus on how I prepare LEDs since I use them extensively and I'll use them on all the models in this build. In the last episode, I worked on an HO scale SD40 locomotive, Conrail 6283. In this episode, I'm going to change things up just a little and focus on preparing LEDs. I'll need these to install lighting for Conrail 6283, but the techniques can be applied to any model or even to things outside the model train hobby. Since I'll be doing these same steps with all the models in this build, and with other models as well, I wanted to make this a standalone episode. That way I won't have to cover the same ground again in the future, and it'll be easy for people to refer back if needed. My goals for this time are to discuss the types of LEDs that I normally use, prepare 3mm LEDs, and prepare surface mount LEDs. LED stands for Light Emitting Diode. They can produce very bright light and they're available in many colors and sizes. LEDs have some important advantages over light bulbs. They have a much longer lifespan and they can be super bright even with small amounts of electrical current. They also generate very little heat, which is important if you're installing them in something made of plastic. I've had incandescent bulbs deform plastic models before, but that's never happened with any of the LEDs that I've used. Because LEDs are diodes, they have a positive and negative side. Diodes only allow electrical current to pass through in one direction, so it's important to pay attention to the polarity. If you hook them up backwards, they won't work. LEDs also generally need resistors to limit the current flowing through them. Without a resistor, an LED may have a very brief lifespan. I mostly use two types of LEDs in my models. I like warm white 3mm LEDs like this one for headlights. I usually buy these in bulk on eBay from whatever vendor happens to be offering a good deal at the time. For number boards and smaller lights, I often use 603 size surface mount LEDs. The least expensive way to get these is in bulk and without wires. They usually come in plastic strips like this. You can get them with wires pre-soldered, but they cost more. If you're not comfortable soldering tiny wires, that can still be a good option. These particular 603 LEDs are red, but you can get them in a variety of colors. I like to test the LEDs before installing them. I cobbled together this homemade LED tester, which is just a 9-volt battery and a holder, a set of alligator clips, and a resistor under the shrink tubing on one of the leads. In situations where there isn't as much room inside a model or an end scale, sometimes I'll use 603 LEDs for headlights instead of 3mm LEDs. I did that in this SPGP9. There are also 402 size surface mount LEDs that are even smaller than the 603s. Those can be good for end scale ditch lights and in other situations where space is limited. I usually get these with wires pre-soldered as they're really tiny, but you can use the same techniques on them as you can with the 603s. For the rest of this program I'll be using the 603 size. You can also get surface mount LEDs in larger sizes. The 3mm and 603 LEDs require different methods of preparation. I'll work on the 3mm LEDs first. It's important to use good wire. This is 30 gauge stranded wire from TCS. It comes in a variety of colors. I also use 36 gauge stranded wire from ESU. Both are good for this application. For model railroaders, I'd highly recommend adhering to established DCC color coding practices when wiring a model. Blue is the common and it goes to the positive side of the LED. On a 3mm LED, the positive lead is usually longer. Also, if you look inside the LED, the smaller of the two metal pieces is positive. The base of the LED is flat on the negative side. That's important to remember if you're like me and you like to snip the leads to make the LED more compact. Doing this kind of work is easier if you clamp the LED in some kind of holder like a small hobby vise. I like to start with the blue wire, but it doesn't really matter what order you use. You can usually strip the insulation of small wire like this using just your fingernails. I like doing this because I know my fingernails won't cut any of the metal strands. Always use rosin core solder for electronics when doing this kind of work. Acid core solder can damage electronic components. A small pencil type soldering iron in the 20 to 30 watt range is ideal for this kind of work. This is an 8th watt 750 ohm resistor. These are what I use for headlights most of the time, though a 1K ohm will also work. Quarter watt resistors are also okay, but they take a little more space. I've seen some people use formulas to try to figure out which resistors to use, but I just use these and they work fine in model railroading applications where the maximum DC power to the LED is usually somewhere around 12 volts. If you're preparing LEDs to work with a different level of power, then you might need to adjust your resistor choices. Since I'm a model railroader, I'm basing my choices on that application. I like to solder my resistors to the negative lead of the LED, though it doesn't really matter. You could put them on the positive side if you wanted to. What's important is that each individual LED needs its own resistor. I'll use yellow wire for the rear headlight LED and solder it to the resistor. 
The last step is to use some heat shrink tubing to make sure that the LED is protected from shorting. I use the shaft of the soldering iron tip to apply heat to the tubing, which shrinks it down over the wires. These are my finished headlight LEDs. The one with the white wire is for the front. Since I'd previously set up this model with fiber optics for the front marker lights and the strands are still intact, I've also prepared a 3mm red LED. I've used a green wire for this one. The only difference other than the color is that I used a 2K ohm resistor on this one since the marker lights don't need to be quite as bright as the headlights. The higher the value of the resistor, the less current will flow to the LED. The rear end of the model is a little more crowded, so I'll set up the rear marker lights using surface mount LEDs. I'll snip a pair of the red LEDs off the strip. Before I remove them from the packaging, I want to set up a place to hold them while I'm working on them. These are really tiny and easily lost. Some blue painter's tape on a sheet of plate glass works well. The middle piece is sticky side up and it will hold the LEDs. It's really hard to see without a magnifying glass, but these LEDs have a symbol on the back that looks like the letter T. The base of the T points at the negative side. I like to solder these tiny LEDs in batches, and I always make sure that all the ones I'm working on are facing in the same direction. I'll mark the negative and positive sides on the tape to make it easier to remember. This is 36 gauge solderable magnet wire. It comes in different colors, but I haven't been able to find as many colors as other wire. I found this wire on eBay. Magnet wire is very thin and flexible and is good for tiny LEDs like these. Since there aren't enough colors to strictly follow the DCC standard in this case, I've come up with my own. I like to use green for the positive side and red for the negative. Using different colored wire makes it easier to know which side is which later. You can color code them any way you like, just be consistent. The solderable magnet wire has an insulating coating that burns off easily with heat. Be sure to look for the word solderable when wire shopping, as if you get regular magnet wire it is much harder to work with. I'll cut the pieces of wire a little longer than I think they need to be. I can always shorten them later. The trick to soldering small LEDs like this is to pre-tin everything. I've already done the ends of the wires. Next I'll put a tiny dab of solder on the contacts on the sides of the LEDs. You don't want to heat them up too much, so it's good to do this quickly. It's important to clean the tip of the soldering iron frequently. I'll solder the red wires first, though the order doesn't really matter. Then I'll connect the green ones to the positive side. I do that because I couldn't find blue wire, which is the DCC standard for the positive common. Green was the closest I could find. I'll give each wire a gentle tug to make sure it's really connected. Now I can remove the LEDs from the tape. I check every LED I make like this with my homemade tester, which as I mentioned earlier has a built-in resistor. Since I'm not going to install these just yet, I'll put a piece of tape on them and label it red. These are warm white LEDs in the same 603 size as the red ones. Warm white LEDs have a slightly yellow color, while regular white LEDs are usually slightly bluish. The warm white is a closer match for real-world train headlights. Sometimes it's easier to pre-tin just one side of the LEDs, then flip the whole thing around and do the other side. I made a total of seven of these. Like I did with the red ones, I put a piece of tape around them to keep them together. I labeled this one warm white. I like to solder LEDs in small batches since it seems like less work when I already have the materials out and the soldering iron is hot. If I make too many, I can always save them for another project. For consistent brightness, it's best for each individual LED to have its own resistor. Putting multiple LEDs on the same resistor can sometimes make them glow at different brightness levels. Whether you're a model railroader adhering to the DCC standard or you're making up your own, color coding wires is important. It makes it a lot easier to know which wire is which. I think that's a good place to leave it for now. In the next episode, I'll show you how I use the LEDs that I made in this episode in my Conrail engine.